Hello folks, Florentine Santiv here. Welcome to the fifth episode of the three months challenge series. New account, three months, no money. Let's see how big our kingdom can get and what happened from day 29 to day 35. We started the week with a flurry of mail rewards to open, one of them being the fortification wall level that I forgot to claim on Thursday. That's a good thing they decided to mail those in case you forget to claim them. Obviously it saved my ass here. With so many rewards to work with, and being the last day kingdom level benefit was available, Friday was a very busy day. After many hesitations and calculations, I decided to go for level 13 to get that Brunhilde token. What made me hesitate was the fact that I would have to burn through all my investiture material I saved up to this point. Promoting that many baseline heroes to green so early was not necessarily the plan I had in mind. I'm also concerned because this will reduce the possibilities of putting strongest heroes to blue, but in the end I just went for it. I unlocked two new heroes because if I'm going to green most of my team, I might as well do it for a couple of relevant heroes. So Beowulf joined the crew, as well as Kawala. I can do enough alliance boss damage now to buy at least one token a day, and I have good hope that I can quickly make her strong. In the end, I was left with no gold nor investiture material, but I did it. I can now forget about kingdom level and not focus as much on main quest, because the only good reward left from it is manuscripts. Challenges for the weekend were not very interesting, an increase alliance XP, where there is not much to do apart from praying that members will connect to make their donation, and an increase alliance intimacy challenge. As expected, our alliance finished second on both, behind Orcus. On the other end, we were given plenty of events to attend. First one is of course Siege, since we had that fortification before. I have to say, we performed way better than what I expected, and I want to thank all members that put great effort and gems to make us claim every alliance progress rewards possible. This is 4 free Noheim tokens and a ton of investiture and quality items in the bag, pretty happy about it. We had a gift of nature going on too, and passively waiting for resources to stack up allowed me on last day to reach 1 million blueberries. This was enough to build an egg so I spent 200 gems there to unlock one. On the options that were given to me, I was lucky enough to see a Milan token so I went for that. I then traded my corn for a second one, but was short to buy another. That's fine though, two tokens for 200 gems is an exchange rate I would take all day. Artifacts of the Divine Soldiers was a new event we never had before, tied to the Blacksmith Handbook feature release. It turned out to be a great event. Not for this account though, because my hero count was too low to grow big. The more heroes you had, the better you could do on this event. Still, by only spending a reasonable amount of gems through it, something along 2000 gems, I was able to score enough points to buy 5 Milan tokens. The key to do well was to focus on raising one attribute to lower the number of heroes you have to slay a beast, and using your blue stones on killing blows to score enormous amount of points. I wasn't reluctant to spend gems on artifacts because I knew alchemy was going to give some back, and boy did it deliver. Alchemy is the best event of the entire game for non-spenders, because it rewards a lot of things for literally free. All I had to do was completing as many quests as possible, and collect my 10 gifted chests a day. On last day, I used and transmuted everything. I got a Matilda token during the process, but more importantly something along the line of 3300 gems, and enough points to buy two Adira tokens. I was tempted to buy Diana tokens instead, but chose to stick to Adira. I was surprised to end up this event at second place, because I didn't do anything fancy. Maybe people were not aware that you have to switch your child, maiden and hero to look for the best luck percentage and the best bonus possible. For maiden and hero, any heroic maiden is going to give you a 30% chance and a luck bonus of 2. Word says that Grace even gives you a luck bonus of 3 but I can't confirm because I don't own her in any of my accounts. Maybe using items in bulk like I did also helps, kind of like manuscripts and many other items, I don't know. For smaller events, we got divination and coronation. I only did my daily free tasks on them so nothing interesting came out of that. Here is the recap of rewards I was able to snipe on Monday thanks to weekend activities. 
Challenges available on Monday were a passive consumed grains, and a two days raise quality that would qualify for a cross server quality challenge. I don't hoard resources to play along the calendar yet, but I take weekly quests into consideration to ensure that I reach 6,000 points every week. So I had quality manuscripts left from Friday because I had completed the hero quality skills upgrade quest during the weekend and saved everything for next week. On top of that, I like to save council XP for either a kingdom power challenge or a quality challenge, so I had a few levels to throw in as well. Yes, quality gain through council levels do count for the challenge, if you didn't know that, you now know what to do. All of this gave me a top 10 finish on the local challenge. I also got top 10 on the consume grains challenge but rewards were not so good. For the cross server challenge, I didn't think I could compete for a good spot but things went really slow up until the very end, so I decided to give it a shot. I threw everything I had left, even quality scrolls one I was saving for Adira, and put a couple more heroes to green to get quality XP. It paid off in the end with another top 10 finish, and a Diana token as a reward for my trouble. Garden Stroll and Path of Wealth were the small events of set 2. I didn't bother with Garden Stroll so nothing to say here. About Path of Wealth, an unfortunate double loop with bad portals put me behind early. On last day, I had 8 dices to cover 2 laps to complete 5 in total. A strike of luck with 2 good portals made me believe that the impossible could be achieved. I had to score 9 with 2 rolls left. Bite me. Later, as I was fishing for manuscripts with main quest, I had to buy something from the gem shop and realized you could buy extra dices there. I spent 400 gems to grab two rolls, and completed my fifth lap. I see this as a 400 gems trade for an Elise token, so I took it. About hero management, passive income from shops helped me getting Kawala Paragon to level 5 already, and Brunhilde to level 4. Considering that I'm close to summoning Mulan now, I will stop buying Brunhilde tokens from the Castle Siege shop and focus on Mulan instead. I will still grab Brunhilde material from campaign expeditions, so that's fine. I also unlocked Siegfried during the week, so I now have all legendary heroes on the team. I will feed them with provisions manuscripts forever, and I don't think I will ever need a provision hero for a long time. Percival went up to Paragon level 3, and even though I haven't worked on him at all for 2 weeks now, He's still my strongest hero, thanks to his level 350. I finished the week around 58 million kingdom power with 36 heroes, and my 6th place on server rankings is consolidated. I stopped at main quest 2220 and I can't get kingdom XP from it anymore. The path towards level kingdom 14 is going to be a long one. Stash is filling up with all kind of tokens, and I also have a decent amount of gems to work with. I was ready to make a move at the Wave of Love event that was supposed to be coming on Friday, but instead developers threw a new event and destroyed the calendar we had for months. My guess is that they're saving it for third anniversary of the game, so I will keep building my gem count to be ready if they throw anything good at us. Here is the lineup recap at the end of week 5. We can see a sort of wall shaping up, only flaw is Merlin because of his enhancement but with time, he will get out of my top 12. Having put so many heroes to green enables my goal to be relevant still, as I have a lot of leveling to do. Sorry Thaddeus, I have better things to do than working on you for now. Anyway, that's all for this week, I hope you enjoyed it. Things have slowed down a little bit so I might go to a 2 weeks recap next time, giving me more room to work on heroes evaluation. In any case, stay tuned. Bye bye.